Hello students. Today we are in lecture number 54 and we will start today with torque. If we will place a current carrying conductor or loop inside uniform magnetic field, it experiences a torque that we will study today. It is lecture number 54. Chapter 4 Moving charge and magnetism of NCRT. My dear student, uh, when we uh, placed a current loop, it has the number of sides then due to the force on different sides in different direction that is the couple of force rotate the coil and we know that if any body or the particle rotating there must be some torque without torque no body can rotate so here we go with the topic its name torque on current coil torque on current coil okay placed in uniform magnetic field all right my dear student yes suppose this is a current loop This is a coil and two. So the current is moving. Let me supply here with the battery. The current is going up and finally current is coming down. Here the current, let me change the direction of current so that the force will be easy to see here. Current is coming in this way. This is current. Now, something you have to consider over here. Suppose this is the magnetic field in which this coil is kept. This magnetic field is B. We'll consider the direction also, my dear student. Here, uh, the side of the coil is. B the side is L all right length is L as very quite clear the area of this coil the face area will be L times B all right now current loop is placed in magnetic field remember so it will experience a torque on different term why let we find the force on the different arm first. Remember students, this two arm, this arm and this arm you can see is parallel to the magnetic field or anti-parallel to the magnetic field. Let me give the name this P, Q, R and S. Side PQ, it is perpendicular to the magnetic field. Of course, it will experience some force. Side RS is also perpendicular to the magnetic field. Of course, this will also experience some force. But here you can see this side QR is anti-parallel current element in this way and the magnetic field in this way. So it is anti-parallel to the magnetic field and the force will be zero. Here, again, for this element, we suppose this element is out of the field this element is kept inside the magnetic field and it, it is parallel to the magnetic field that's why the current will be zero it means this two arm only qp and rs going to experience some force and if both the arm will experience force in opposite direction that is the couple of force this coil starts rotating suppose this is coil one force acting in this way and another force acting in this way okay downward 
one downward and one upward. So what will happen? This upward force will try to pull this one like this way and the downward force will try to rotate the square like this way. All right. So it will start rotating okay, in this manner. Now, uh, let you find here the directional force. Okay. But we know the force on QR and force on PS will be zero. Why my dear students? Since theta is either 180 degree or zero degree with the magnetic field and parallel anti parallel conductors never experience any force. Force on PQ, okay, let we find force on PQ, all right. We know that the formula of force, it is I love sine theta. So F will be I, the direction of current. L, the direction of current will give the direction of L and it is L minus J cross B magnetic field it is for both the arm it is B I what will be minus J cross I my dear student here uh, this is the direction of minus J that is L and magnetic field in this direction so you have to put the finger in this way cross one it will goes up that is I Okay, L, B, K, cap. This is the force. All right, my dear student. So you can represent the force in this way. Represent the direction of force. This coil experiencing the force in this direction. Okay, yes. Now, force on this arm, that is, R S force on R S again here the F it is I L direction it is J cap cross B again I cap so this will be the I L B and the direction this is the direction of L and the B you have to move this way so you cannot put your hand in this way you have to flip it and the direction of force will be downward minus k minus k this is the force now try to represent the force using this red marker and this is the direction of force now you can see my dear students on this arm force is acting in upward direction on this arm force is acting in downward direction so the square will start rotating in this way let me draw here the axis if this is axis, the coil will start rotating in this direction. And if it is rotating, it means there must be some torque. Okay? Am I correct? Yes. Now, our aim to find the torque. Remember, we know that the torque is R cross F. All right. Here the two forces are there. So, the two torque will act. Let me draw this one. From here, it is rotating, so this will be the axis of rotation. Try to recall what you have studied in standard 11 about the rotation in rotation about the torque. Okay, this is the axis of rotation. So, this coil will rotate and arm length for the rotation will be this way. If this is the B, okay, if this is the B, then what will be the arm length? It will be B by 2. All right. And for this force also, the arm length will be B by 2. We always take the direction of arm length, that is the R, from point of rotation to the application of force. So here we can write the net torque will be tau 1 plus tau 2. The two forces will act. The two torque will be considered here for this force. Okay, R, it is B by 2. B by 2, the direction it is minus I cross F and this F, it is the first 
F in PQ direction. This was F. Let me write the F1 and F2 so we can, will not confuse. This is the F1 and this is the F2. All right. Both the magnetic have the same. ILBK cap. I L B K cap plus the second one it is B by 2 R cross F so this is the B by 2 and the direction I cross the force it is this one I L B minus K cap all right now minus I cross K minus I cross K you will find this is the minus i and cross k it is upon sorry minus i cross k this will be the j so i l b by 2 i l b by 2 i l b by 2 and small b also direction it is j cap plus this is the same i l b by 2 and the direction remain same you can find out i cross minus k so overall we are having here the two will be cancel out so i l b b i l b times b direction is j okay this one now let me simplify finally we are towards the answer you can see my dear students, this L times B is nothing but the face area of the coil. Okay, face area of the coil that is A. So this net torque can be written as I A B. I A B. Alright, I A B. A is the face area and the direction is the same. Here A is L into B this is the face area. Now my dear students, suppose if we give the number of turns to this coil, okay, number of turns here, the number of turns if we will give to this coil, then which quantity will change? Giving the number of turns in this coil, remember only the magnetic field is going to be changed. Remember, the current is not going to be changed. The same current because in series, all the turn are given in series. So the 5 ampere current is flowing, suppose, then remain same in in each turning. All right. Area. Area is also not going to be changed. So uh, because the radius uh, will maintain, uh, sorry, the length and breadth will maintain the same. So area is not going to be changed. Current is not going to be changed. So magnetic field will change. If this one is making one Tesla, then another one also will make one Tesla. So the two Tesla will be equivalent. So magnetic field is going to be changed. For N turn, for N turn, what will happen? The mag torque can be written as the N times will be B. So I, I, A, B, okay, and this is the very, very important, my dear student. The same thing we'll use in galvanometer. Well, we'll start galvanometer. We'll study this particular thing, which is very important. Okay, now we are going to write this equation in vector form. Look at here. Here in vector form, tau can be written as this. Actually, this is in vector form. We are going to change this form. I A, try to recall this I A was considered at the magnetic dipole moment for any loop, magnetic loop or an I A. This is called the mu. All right. And mu B and Z. You can write here mu b sine theta also here is one so the mu b sine 90 degree you can write because the mu is this current is flowing this way the mu is perpendicular upward so the angle between magnetic field and mu it is 90 degree so this can be written as my dear student as mu cross b remember this is mu cross b 
this is and the magnitude is n i a b its magnitude is n i a b or mu b okay mu b or n i a b okay you have to remember this one this is the magnitude of torque which is acting on the current current loop my dear students okay now uh we'll try to find out if we place a, a dipole that is the magnetic dipole inside magnetic field in equilibrium all right here you can see it's rotating but what will happen if after rotation it comes in this position it will stop it will not rotate all right so to disturb this coil from its equilibrium this will consider the equilibrium position when its plane surface is perpendicular to the magnetic field it remain in it will be considered in uh, equilibrium position okay now from its equilibrium position if you want to disturb this coil it means we have to do some work all right to rotate this coil we are going to find now here what amount of work we have to do to rotate this coil by theta angle okay by certain angle so our next topic will be work done to rotate a coil work done to rotate a coil yes in uniform magnetic field inside uniform magnetic field if you want to rotate a coil like this way suppose this is the magnetic field provided and this is in stable state the coil is perfectly in a stable state this is the direction of mu you can say this is the direction of magnetic field both are the vector quantity this is in a stable state perfectly so to rotate this by some angle theta suppose we rotate and mu comes in this direction to rotate from theta okay so the first will be 0 degree to theta we are going to rotate from 0 degree to theta from 0 degree to theta degree what we have to do work we are going to here find out we know that we know that work done by the torque it is dw tau d theta we have studied in standard 11th dw equals to tau d theta okay we'll integrate and we'll find the answer the very simple so the dw tau that we have studied already it is mu b sin theta you can see here so the mu b sin theta into d theta from theta 1 to theta 2 we have to rotate let me take let me have this one my dear student okay now i hope that you can now uh, find the result but let me uh, help you dw will be the w this is also considered the potential energy in coil inside magnetic field remember this is also called the potential energy inside magnetic field okay my dear student yes dw this w because the change in work done gives the potential energy here the work is changing so the total amount of work done to change the orientation is stored in as potential energy mu b is the constant taken out sin theta will be integration of sin theta will be minus cos theta from theta 1 to theta 2 all right so we can write the mu b minus cos theta 2 plus cos theta 1 all right yes so it is mu b cos theta 1 minus cos theta 2 okay now try to find out if you want to rotate the coil from the first angle that is 0 degree to some certain angle then what will be the magnetic field it is the mu b cos 0 minus cos theta okay my dear students cos theta okay 
so this will be the mu b 1 minus cos theta and this is the work done to rotate a coil inside magnetic field which type of coil it is the current carrying coil remember i have not mentioned everything in very short space but it is the current carrying coil okay my dear students now we'll proceed for the next topic of our slavers it is okay before proceeding the next let we solve a very interesting question okay yes my dear students i'm giving you this question to solve uh, this is class four although i'll solve remember mm, suppose this is the length of conductor l this is you're having a conductor of length L. If you bend this conductor in circular form, it will have the number of turns, suppose n. Okay, this is very, lo very, very long conductor, and you have to bend this conductor in n number of turns. Finally, n number of turns. All right, how many turns you have given? N, n number of turns, so that it maintains some radius. Of course, there will be some radius. Okay. This is how many turns should remember listen carefully how many turns okay should it have for maximum torque how many turns you will give so that it experience maximum torque and also you have to find that torque for tau max you have to find the number of turns all right and also you have to find the torque that is maximum only right. here i current is passed it is given current passed through the conductor what are given you are having the length of the conductor it was l and this particular length is being winded to form a closed loop the tiny closed loop okay the number of turns it is given n you have to find how many turns you will give all right remember the complete turn you have to give how many turns you will give it means the answer of n will be perfect number it is one two three four okay integer now how to think this type of question what will be the answer try to think my dear student by yourself okay and then i'll solve this question <coughs> my dear student suppose to find the torque what we know that here torque it is n i a b sine theta the first thing if you want the torque maximum this theta should be such that sine theta maximum of course it is one <coughs> sine theta should be one all right of course, this will be the perpendicular. Now, the maximum torque, it will be the N I A B. Here, I is the current, all right, and is the number of turning that we have to find actually. A is the area, remember. Here, A is the area which is pi r square. Okay, this one is the face area, but we don't know the value of r. So, try to find out r. Since this L length gives the 2 pi r, but how many turns? N turns. So the N times 2 pi r. This L is N times 2 pi r. So you can find out the value of r from here. It is L by 2 pi times N. So very simple. Now you can find the area also. This area is pi r square. And this r, it means L square divided by 4 pi square times n square it means this uh, a will be l square divided by 4 pi thus pi will cancel out n square am i correct yes be careful while i'm uh, solving any question be careful my student now we got the area we are having the current, we have to find the number of turns, 
you are having the manifold so the torque we can write here it is n i b and a it is l square by 4 pi n square what we can write here the n will be cancelled out so it is l square i b divided by 4 pi times n you can see the stock is l square i b by 4 pi n now try to find out the constants value l could you change no you cannot change it is given the length of the conductor i could you change you know you have given okay actually the condition asking for the number of turns so you are not going to change this current for any value of current you have to find the number of turn magnetic field it is given 4 pi already constant it means the number of turn you can see maximum the number of turns the torque will be minimum and minimum the number of turns you will get the maximum torque it means for tau max okay this n should be minimum and how many minimum turn you can give minimum one zero is has no value all right in turning so the minimum you can give you cannot say 0 0.5 half is not perfect turn okay so this n should be one for maximum torque all right so this is the answer the number of turning will be one now the question are asking what will be the torque maximum torque so put the value of n over here you will get the maximum torque and it is l square i b over 4 pi so this is the maximum torque my dear students okay so this was very fantastic question now uh, we'll move for the next uh, topic or we'll solve okay let me solve one more question okay my dear student let me solve one more question over here all right now this question is or i i will solve that question later on uh, i think uh, we should uh, proceed for one more topic i'll solve uh, i'll give this question in group for your classwork okay now oscillation of current loop in uniform magnetic field as we know that if we'll leave a loop inside the magnetic field it will start rotating and if it is in uh, its uh, equilibrium position and if you will disturb the coil by slightly by slightly then it try to regain its actual position it means it will start oscillating okay so oscillation of current loop in form magnetic field oscillation of current loop in uniform magnetic field all right the very simple thing suppose you have suspended a coil like this one through which the current is flowing all right and its area the mu it is in this direction if this is the magnetic field all right if you will disturb this coil if this coil is in this way if you will disturb this coil and leave it will start it will experience a counter torque and try to be its actual position if you disturb from here it will try to be in on its actual position and due to its inertia it must have some inertia because it has mass due to inertia it will move little further its equilibrium position again it will try to and it will face some counter torque and it will move to its actual position due to torque it will move slightly further so in this way you can see it is oscillating in this way all right so we are going to find here the time period for this oscillation okay if a magnetic loop is displaced from its equilibrium loop will oscillate remember okay and it will oscillate due to restoring torque what will be the restoring torque my dear student so the restoring torque will be minus mu b sine theta remember when we talk about the simple harmonic motion the theta should be very small for shm theta should be very small all right it means sine theta will be prox equals to theta it means tau 
restoring you can write minus mu b theta which is going to balance this mu b theta of course you remember you have studied in standard 11 the i alpha all right minus mu b theta now i the moment of inertia so it is mu b over i theta try to recall this alpha is d2 theta by dt square all right minus mu b by i theta now you have to compare this equation by the standard equation of shm what is that d2 theta by dt square it is minus omega square theta i hope you remember it means omega square is mu b by i all right mu by i finally thus omega can be written the root under mu b by i and this is nothing but the 2 pi by t it means the t will be 2 pi will be reverse so the i by mu b in this way successfully we got the time period my dear students so the time period if any conductor is placed in magnetic field it will uh, oscillate okay it's like simple harmonic motion and the time period will be the 2 pi i by mu b my dear students okay so remember i don't think uh, this was very difficult and the any uh, thing i so repeat i uh, have solved this question in very uh, fast speed because you were knowing all the things okay my dear students in next lecture we'll start a important topic that is the portion of your examination and the question will be asked in three or five marks and that is the magnetic field due to solenoid will start okay the two thing i'll teach you the solenoid if the solenoid is very long that is of infinite length okay and the second thing if the sol solenoid is uh, of short length that is the for the finite length okay for both the solenoid we will do some work how to find the magnetic field and also we will depict the pattern of magnetic field how the magnetic field are uh, uh, oriented okay in that solenoid so student remember i used to tell you if you find any mistakes in my lecture kindly notify in comment section okay so that it can rectify okay my dear students thank you very much